G'day folks. Well, it's finally time to uh, replace and retire my faithful old uh, Danfoss uh, I think a Tandem SC15BM R22 compressors. Uh, they're my main shop air system, which I built basically probably not about a year after I moved in here. Um, I think that'd be about four or five years ago now. They've been around a while. You can see the amount of muck that's built up on there and the run caps are getting a bit sad. But finally, we, um, oh wow, that one is getting sad. Um, finally blew out one of the reed valves in there. Like, they were getting pretty sad and I put a check valve in there to stop them leaking down overnight. Now all they do is just circulate air between the two of them. And on Saturday night when we were shutting the shop down, uh, I noted to Julian that they were still running and the gauge was still sitting on 75 PSI. I'm like, uh, how long's that been running for? And I think he said it was about 25 minutes to half an hour. <laughs> so they've been running constantly for about half an hour and we're just too hot to touch. Like as soon as I turned them off, this big puff of smoke comes out the inlet. Because it was trying to pressurise and just building a tiny bit of pressure, maybe a couple of PSI, and just recirculating through the from the inlet of one compressor to the outlet of the other and heat of compression just built up and up and up till they... Uh, roasted each other they do still run they run perfectly fine but the gauge doesn't move so uh and you can hear it sort of surging inside they just don't do anything so it's time to retire them i'm going to replace them with a big uh probably one of the big vertical copeland two or three cylinder inline compressors or one of the big blue danfoss single cylinder um sort of commercial cool room or rooftop air conditioner compressors the big blue ones Still single phase, but just higher capacity. These ones here have a piston about one inch in diameter and a stroke of about half an inch at 3600 RPM. The one I want to replace it with has a piston about two inches in diameter and a stroke of about an inch and a half at the same sort of speed. Actually, no, I think it's a four pole compressor, so it's 1400 RPM. Similar swept volume, a little bit higher though. So it should be, should be just fine. Again, I'm using a uh, very old and very thick argon cylinder for it, and I'm only bringing it up to 110 pounds, so all I'll do is do my periodic uh, upending of the cylinder and drain the water out. It has been a, quite a while since I've done that, so there's probably about a couple of litres of condensation in there. And, uh, yeah, it should be quite fine. I would like another cylinder to go next to it, though, or even a couple of aluminium oxy oxygen cylinders get rid of the uh, steel but then these cylinders are ridiculously thick in the base so I'm not worried about it rusting through any time in the near 10 years. <laughs> Trying to remove the uh, start cap uh, didn't end well for the cap it just kind of fell apart. Thing is it was still working perfectly fine there's nothing wrong with that cap it's just not safe. Um, as I said both compressors were running fine they've always run fine. I replaced this cap once years ago after I accidentally knocked it and smashed it. That one's never been replaced, but as you can see, it's cracked as well and hemorrhaging. It probably isn't far off the same sort of fate. And it's still holding together. The casing is cracked and weeping, but it's not quite as bad. I'm just disconnecting the presser switch. The old uh, power lead's cut off. I'm just going to basically isolate as much as I can. I'll take the pressure control off, disconnect the tank, get the tank out of here, and then look at unscrewing the uh, compressors. They're only just um, held down with self-tappers, so they'll come off. A little intake filter, which was also a new old stock um, filter dryers uh, coming off. I'll replace that with a bigger one. Um, well, actually, I'll probably just use a regular air filter. I only use that because I had it on hand. I had several pallet loads of them at the local scrapyard. This is all new. This was all new old stock Danfoss stuff. It was never actually uh, used in a refrigeration system, hence why it probably lasted so long. But yeah, before I even started on YouTube, the local scrapyard uh, had a good contract contact with uh, Danfoss Australia, and whenever they'd get um, containers of new old new stock in, the old stock would get thrown out particularly really old stock, like they were still throwing out R12 compressors 
um, when I just just before I started on YouTube and I figured uh, since I had so much surplus I'd start doing compressor videos and bits like that and that's sort of how I got started on YouTube I mean many of you probably remember my original videos and a lot of you a lot of you most of you probably don't and uh, unfortunately it's, it's quite sad because YouTube's made it really hard to go back through the archives and actually look at my original videos they really need to improve the search functions and things so that people can go back and just look at my original videos from start to finish rather than finish to start and even then you can't navigate back so many menus before it stops letting you navigate so they've kind of ruined the whole uh, archiving system for it at least last I checked anyway they might have fixed it but I doubt it so yeah this is the kind of stuff that sort of got me going on YouTube to be honest it's sort of my bread and butter for the days I wish I could do more of it but again contact's gone, Danfoss doesn't, uh, Danfoss probably found a better scrapyard or even a more local one and uh, yeah all that stuff's just gone so uh, yeah I still have some uh, surplus compressors kicking around, I'm not going to use these again for it I'm going to save them for smaller higher pressure compressors but we can still build something with a lot of the surplus uh, multi-cylinder multi compressors that I have from bigger AC units or the big blue brand new old stock. Uh, I don't have any scrolls left but I do have um, some single and twin cylinder um, MTZ series reciprocating compressors, commercial compressors. So anyway, let's keep going. Okay, well the tank's out. <laughs> Came out intact. I was going to take all this stuff off but it doesn't really need to. I'll just take that um, fitting off. Um, it's an old cylinder. Tear weight 100, it was 111 and a quarter pounds, 1980. Oh, it's not too old. Yeah, an old CIG, Commonwealth Industrial Gases. High pressure, I think it was argon or something like that. Definitely not an acetylene tank. They're concrete lined and filled with um, cotton wool or something like that. Soak up acetylene um, to soak up acetone. Yeah. Now oh, the mount work that I did was half decent. There's enough screws in there to hold a bigger compressor. It shouldn't end up on the floor. Yeah. I did a pretty good job of it. So next step is to get them off their little mounts and on the floor, and then I can start cleaning this base plate up and uh, look at installing a new one probably reinforce some of this. I might reinforce the top part and get rid of that bracket. That's all redundant these days. Well, that's the whole rig out. I was thinking these are R22 compressors. These aren't rated to those head pressures. These are R12 compressors. Mind you, I'm only pumping up to about 110 psi, so that's nothing unusual for one of these. I just thought they were rated a lot higher. No, these are obsolete R12 um, tandem compressors. That's pretty cool. They lasted a hell of a long time. Um, even through a lot of abuse using uh, ping pong ball guns and things like that. And uh, yeah, that's pretty damn good. I'd say Dan Foss does a damn good job of making their uh, commercial fridge compressors. If they can put up with, uh, well, some fairly uh, industrial abuse and... Uh, usage which they're not really designed for. It's definitely not designed for. That's good. Um, I shall be using another Danfoss compressor to replace it, an R22 one designed to run at higher head pressure and uh, maybe even build the rest of this system up for that sort of thing and run a uh, pressure regulator. Because right now the whole system is just unregulated 110 psi. Um, I could probably go even higher with an R22 compressor and use a regulator to knock it down to 100, 110 psi. So that's even better. Uh, still got to drain the cylinder out, but I'll do that tomorrow or the next day. I think for the rest of the afternoon I'll clean up and just look at reinforcing this mount. It still has to be at least this high to uh, clear the top of the tank and the plumbing, but that's not bad. Just needs a good vacuum clean and uh, clean up. Same with down there. The amount of old Nerf darts and ping pong balls I'm finding around here is amazing. 
too many Nerf and ping pong ball wars in this shed. Okay, so the compressor I've settled on is a uh, MT18JA. It is a 13, or oh, sort of 13, 12 amp um, peak uh, single cylinder 240 volt single phase cap start cap run comp compressor. Should work quite well. Um, it's got capacitor tables, um, run caps, and start cap. Uh, along with the starting relay model, if I want to actually buy the genuine one, I'm going to try one out of a Fujitsu condensing unit, which is rated to 20 amps. This one's only 13, 12 or 13 amp um, compressor, so it should last long enough, but I will definitely buy and keep in stock a good starting unit. Uh, it's a little more complicated than the old rig, but it should put out a lot more capacity. And I have a number of these compressors, these little ones, in stock as brand new old stock to surplus so if I do blow one up in the next 12 months or so I've got another three or four left I'm hoping they last as long as the other ones although the discharge manifold on these has the discharge at the top so if the manifold runs cold any water accumulation in it will come back down and sit against the uh, reed valves whereas the old um, SC15 series have the valves at the top of the manifold and the outlet at the bottom so any water purges out. I have a feeling these compressors won't last as long but since they're free surplus I don't really care. And all of these big compressors generally have a manifold that comes up through the top of the housing and uh, doesn't drain water very well including the Copeland which I have uh, I had a look at it but again I've got more of these and since they're a rotor lock fitting they're easy to fit up, easy to exchange if they fail, there's no brazed fittings and they also have an oil sight glass on them which the Copeland doesn't. Yeah, So this was going to be the main candidate but again I can't find all the start and run equipment, I can't find data on what to run it with as far as caps go although I could get a decent estimate I'm guessing a 100 mic start, 20 mic run would probably keep it happy but a very old compressor that's seen a fair bit of use so I'd rather save that for something else. Um, that is the new one in place and uh, ready to go. Just got to fit it all up. I'm going to paint the tank and I'm also going to put an after cooler in there so discharge air comes out through an after cooler fan cooled through a water trap and a, um, a dropper catch as much water as I can then to tank, whereas before the tank was my water trap and I used to have to periodically drag it out and drain it. And uh, that's a bit of a pain, so hopefully I can dry the air before it gets there. I do have a uh, SMC refrigerated dryer, but it's got like two inch inlet and outlet. It's just way too big for what I'm doing. The thing would sit there and freeze up before I could actually get enough air through it to keep it uh, cycling properly. So yeah, I either need a miniature refrigerated air dryer, which is definitely not impossible to make, it's actually probably quite easy with the gear that I've got, or just a basically an air to uh, air to air heat exchanger, which is what I'm doing now. Yeah, the tank's going to get a uh, coat of sapphire blue, about the same colour as blue you have over there, which is sort of an international colour for uh, compressed air. That looks pretty good. I'm giving it a good wash down with uh, prep wash and uh, I'm just going to start spraying so it should come out quite nicely. Beautiful. I want this system online as soon as possible, that's sort of why I'm working late during the week. I want this system up so I can get new tyres fitted for the Barina, get that out of here and also uh, look at a few other jobs over the weekend, otherwise all I'm going to be doing is fixing up the compressors. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun and it gives me something interesting to do during the week. Okay, so everything's in place. Uh, it's just a matter of fitting everything up. I've got some of the electricals done. And uh, Dyna bolted and uh, I ended up urethane foaming the underside of the, uh, the box because it split in half. As soon as I put the cylinder in there, the box just split in half because the cylinder hit this Dyna bolt here. And uh, yeah, so it's been it's got steel wedges chocked under that side and I've just pumped some uh, urethane foam under there to stabilise it. So it uh, should be pretty good. 
The idea is that it absorbs vibration rather than transmitting it anywhere else. Because as you can see, it's not actually touching the back wall of the shed. Because uh, that tin was resonating something fierce when I turned the compressor on with the original wall mount. I wish I could have kept it, but it eh, doesn't matter. I'm going to turn this into a self-contained little operations unit. Um, that's all got to be finished and hooked up later. Right now I'm just working out where to put everything. So I do have the after cooler to go up as well. Look at this. That's going to be the air after cooler. Inlet, outlet. Uh, yeah, it's a little bit tricky, but not impossible. Could either be vertical or horizontal. I'm thinking maybe you know, have it like that over the top with a couple of uh, super quiet uh, 12 or 240 volt mains sort of five inch computer fans so yeah a little more a little more decision work to do on that one but overall there's enough room up there to uh, mount something I just got to panel that out clean it up seal it up and uh, should be pretty right Okay, so I ended up ditching the uh, alley coil, all alley coil. Um, that thing was a mongrel to try and fit off to. The ends were so paper thin. As soon as you try and move it around or attach to anything, the uh, coil splits off here. I got down a couple of rows and then just gave up. So I got this one here. It's a bit smaller, more loops. But again, given the volume of this compressor, should have no problem pushing air through it. Again, it's not about char tank charge up speed it's just about being able to do it it'll work you can see where I scorched the uh, panel trying to braze and just just mess around with the damn thing it wasted too long on it so yeah I'm gonna cut this down flare fit it off to here that's the inlet that's the outlet and everything's gonna go back to tank uh, I should be able to flip this fan blade over and turn it into a pusher rather than a puller because right now it's designed to pull air through the coil. I want it to go up. But that fan will be integral to it. Yeah, not bad.